Well, there's Duck Lake. It's pretty big. We're working our way down toward Pika Lake, which is on the other side of that hill right there. Supposedly, according to the trail guide, there's some fair to really good campsites. So, we're having to head down this hill, which it looks like we're going to have to rehike tomorrow, which we're not looking forward to. But, to get to these scenic spots, that's the price you pay, I guess. Hopefully we'll be uh, at Pika Lake in an hour, and uh, we'll be setting up camp for tonight. Looking forward to that, taking off the boots. Maybe cooking some grub, and maybe boiling up some tea or some some of that Vietnamese coffee I've been craving all day. Well, this is the uh, this is the far end of Duck Lake. Uh, we worked our way down from Duck Pass, which is behind me over there, just to the left of that peak, and uh, we worked our way around the edge of the lake here, and we're heading down over this little ridge. Hopefully, we'll find some good campsites over at Pika Lake. Uh, not too far away, half mile maybe, and. Uh, I'm hoping we find some great spots. It's been a tough day, and I'm looking forward to some relaxation, setting up the uh, Locust Gear TP, and getting out my little camp chair, and cooking something to eat, and just relaxing as we work our way around the edge of Duck Lake. Well, we're working our way around the end of Duck Lake. There's Duck Lake right there. And uh, we're trying to find a campsite at Pika Lake, which is over this ridge right in front of us. We're kind of beat. Not only did we uh, have to climb Duck Pass from our trailhead, we've had to come down a pretty steep hill, which is over that way. That's, that's Duck Pass right there. We came down to here, and it looks like tomorrow we got to go back up that damn thing. And supposedly, I don't see a use trail on that side of Duck Lake, so we're going to have to go all the way around. But I'm hoping, as we work our way along the edge of the lake here, I'm hoping right over this little tree-lined area, we're going to find some really good campsites. Um, according to the guidebook, it said there are fair to good campsites. And that's encouraging because most of the places I've been, they say poor to fair campsites. And since we haven't seen anybody else on the trail today that was heading this way, I have a feeling we're going to have this place to ourselves. Problem is, we got to earn it. Nothing good comes cheap. As we work our way, you can see Jerry, he's down there, working our way up and over this little ridge line to Pike a Lake and our, hopefully our, our campsite tonight. Well, we finally arrived at Pika Lake, or Pika Lake, however you pronounce it. A little harder than we thought, but we made it. We're setting up our tents here. You can see the lake in the background. Smell smoke, though. That'll help. <laughs> and uh, everybody's getting their tent set up. Mike's got his new REI tent over here. Was it tough getting to this point, Mike? Uh, what's that? Was it tough getting to this point? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Hopefully, payoff will be worth it because there's a view of the lake right there. Not too bad of a walk down to get some water. And I've got my setup right here. I have to adjust it a little bit, but this is my uh, locust gear. 9x9 nine nine TP. It's floorless. So I've got it set up right here. I've got all my gear right there. I'm going to put all that inside here. I have a little bit of a ground sheet to put in there. And uh, Dave, you're all set up. You all done or not yet? Well, Getting there? Done with this. Just got to throw my uh, pad and my uh, sleeping bag in there. Yeah, that's what I got to do too. I got to get it all fluffed up. So, little creature comforts. Yep. At least we're finally in camp. Well, we finally made it to camp. This is uh, Pika Lake, or Pika Lake, depending on how you pronounce it. 
Uh, found a really good campsite. It uh, overlooks the lake. Uh, Duck Lake is on the other side of this, in between this ridge line. But this is a great little campsite. Water's right below us here. Jerry's got his tent set up right here. Uh, Mike is over here in the corner. And uh, I've got my setup right over here. Let me give you a tour real quick. Uh, this is a Locust Gear Cafra Cell Nylon teepee shelter. It's a 9x9. It's a four-man shelter. Uh, you could line up four sleeping bags in here, but it'd be kind of tight. It's mainly designed for two people in gear. Um, does not have a floor. Um, I'll give you a little better look here. Uh, I've got my Thermarest Neo Air All Season air mattress in there right now. I've got it all inflated already. Uh, the good thing about the Neo Air is that it's uh, it's rated to zero degrees, so you don't have that cold coming up from the ground getting into your sleeping bag. I've got a Marmot Neverwinter sleeping bag. It's a 32 degree down bag I've had for probably 10, 12 years. Um, and uh, it's a good bag. It's uh, it's true to the rating. Uh, I've been in it in 30 degree weather uh, with no bivy sack outside, and it's uh, it's right on the money for me at least. I know some people are hot sleepers and some are cold sleepers, but for me it works great. Um, I didn't bring a ground cloth for it. I brought one just enough to cover the uh, thermo rest. Uh, I really don't need it anyway. Uh, I wanted to just throw my boots on the side over here, and I also wanted a cooking area. Uh, I have a huge area over here. I'm going to bring, eventually bring my pack in, set my pack inside under the shelter, keep the dew off of it. I can also cook here. I've got my cook set sitting right there. Uh, in a little bit, um, I'll set that up. I'll move the plastic. I'll actually set my cook set up. I'm using an alcohol stove, so I don't have to worry about open flames burning a hole in the sill nylon or anything. But anyway, I'll give you a little exterior shot of it here, of the uh, Locust Gear TP and what it looks like. Uh, it's kind of hard to find uh, a space big enough. I had to kind of can't the angle just a little bit because of this big rock right here but uh, uh, it's about almost six feet tall I can get it a little higher if I want but uh, I don't really need to so I'm kind of digging the way it's set up right now so I'll be in there it, it does have a gap on the bottom that's what helps with uh, with ventilation uh, I won't keep the water from running underneath but that's what the plastics for and that's also why uh, why I have my three inch uh, Thermarest inflatable pad. That'll keep my sleeping bag off the ground. But anyway, we're here at uh, Pika Lake, just outside of Mammoth. It was about probably, oh, about a six-mile hike or so to get here. So we're looking forward to a nice, quiet night tonight. There shouldn't be anybody else here. There is another group. They're way on the other side of those trees, and uh, nobody else here. So, And we saw nobody else on the trail at least nobody that was camping with backpacks. So we should have the whole place pretty much to ourselves tonight. Well, how's it going? I'm here in, uh, just outside of Mammoth. We're at uh, Pika Lake or Pika Lake. Right about uh, 10,300 feet or so in elevation. Uh, Duck Lake is right on the other side and Duck Lake Pass is uh, over the ridge line there. So this is day one of our adventure on Anthony's Audio Journal. Uh, we made it to Pika Lake. Tomorrow we're going to head back and around Duck Lake. We're going to head over to Purple Lake. It's about five, five, six miles. We're going to set up camp tomorrow at Purple Lake. And then from there, we're going to continue around toward Ram Lake and eventually work our way all the way down to Virginia Lakes before heading back to Mammoth along the Mammoth Crest. So that'd be fun. It's a good day today. We got a little bit of drizzle at the top at the pass, but not enough to pull out rain gear for. Uh, but it was hard. It's hard. To, you know, the first day is the roughest because it's when your pack's the heaviest. Your bear can is the heaviest, uh, and so far I haven't eaten anything out of the bear can, so uh, it's going to be just as heavy in the morning as what it is right now. So i got to get to eating, taking some of that weight out of that bear can. It is a bear can area, so you're, you'd be uh, violating the regulations if you didn't have one. You'd be stupid, too, because there are bears down here. and We've had bear come into camp up in the Ansel Adams Wilderness and in Yosemite, so uh, it's a good idea here. So bring your bear cans. Well, we're at uh, Pika Lake here in Mammoth Mountain. And uh, we hiked about six miles in, so I'm going to make some dinner tonight. I'm hungry. I'm going to try this Packet Gourmet Dottie's Chicken and Dumpling. It sounds pretty good. It requires 14 ounces of boiling water, so... 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour some water into this uh, homemade foster pot that I made. It's about a, oh, I'm going to say 16 ounce bottle maybe. It might be 20, I don't know. So I'm going to fill it up a little ways here. And uh, dump it into my Musa pot. And I'll show you why here in a minute because get the sucker lit. It's kind of hard to see alcohol when it's burning. Give it a few minutes to to vaporize around the rim here. There we go. You can't see it, but it's burning. Throw my little windscreen on there. Throw my little amusa pot. Got a little lid for it in my cozy here. Just made it out of a Marie Callender's pie tin. Got kind of smashed in transportation. So we'll let that go for a bit, but in the meantime, something I wanted to do, I wanted to make some I wanted to make some coffee, and I didn't want to wait, so I'm going to pour maybe maybe 12 ounces or so in that cup. And I had this. I made this a long time ago. It was a tea light stove, and I decided to... I had some of these little cubes. They were like uh, emergency fire starters, uh, so I'm going to throw that inside here, and I'm going to use that as a stove, and I'm going to cook on my amusa pot, or on my uh, my little Foster's pot here. So I don't know how it'll do with no windscreen. I guess we'll figure it out, but the hard part is gonna be getting this little sucker lit. These things are kinda hard to light. Yeah, I think it's going finally. Yeah, it's finally lit. I don't know how much heat it's going to put off. Now this is just coffee, so I don't have to get this to a rolling boil. I just need to heat it up, so it shouldn't take too long. In the meantime, yep, yeah, that's going good. Well, I made my uh, made my dinner. It's right here. It's uh, hydrating inside here. It's my uh, chicken and dumplings from Packet Orme. It's hydrating, and I just uh, had some water boiling here. I'm going to make some coffee here in a minute. I've got this stuff got from a co-worker. It's called Vena Cafe. It's got uh, it's instant coffee with creamer and sugar all mixed in one. It's a pretty big container. This Foster's pot that I made is about uh, 16 ounces at least. So I, uh, I'm going to use two of these. The other two I'm gonna save for the morning. But this uh, packet gourmet looks pretty tasty. I gotta let it hydrate just a little bit longer. And that's gonna be good because I can smell it already. Well, I'm just coming back from the water's edge. I uh, I heated up my, uh, my packet gourmet, the chicken and dumplings, but it's just too hot. I've got it in a cozy and you gotta wait for it to cool down. Also made some of that Vena Cafe coffee, and that's in a cozy, and that's too hot as well. So I think uh, next time I use the the little alcohol stove, I'm gonna use less than an ounce. I don't really want a full rolling boil. I think I'm just gonna go for warming up my coffee. So we'll see. See what happens. Mike thought he saw a bear over there. We saw something through the through the trees. Kind of got our attention real quick, but I think it's just a burnt log. Hasn't moved in five minutes, so hopefully that's what that is. But this is bear area, so you never know. We got our bear cans. We're gonna set them a good distance away. We're gonna have to make sure we tighten down the screws too. What are you making, Dave? I'm gonna make probably too much, too many mashed potatoes. But what I'm gonna do is uh, these things 
You're the one that told me about the guy that all he eats is oh, yeah, the, potato burritos. <laughs> oh yeah, those those are good. I actually have some in my beer can. Yeah, they're uh, delicious. I eat them at home too. So I'm gonna make these, and then um, I brought uh, good sized tortillas, and I can eat it plain, or I've got some chicken here, and uh, I brought some spam. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, and that's actually all I have for each dinner every night. Um, so. Well, I'm sure it's got plenty of calories. Yeah, calories and not too bad on the fat and all that. But um, I was going to make half the package, but that's only eight. That's only one cup. It doesn't seem like much, so I'm going to make the whole thing and yeah, see what happens. And if I don't eat it all, I'll, I don't know. You'll share. Eat for the bears. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Best I can do. And it's like you did your laundry over there? Oh, yeah, I did laundry down there, too. Uh. And, uh, <laughs> clean clothes. I've also uh, brought a different water filter uh, system on this one. I, uh, I had the, uh, the Sawyer squeeze filter, and I replaced it with the mini filter because it's smaller obviously but I've also hooked it up down into a, a two liter platypus bag so basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the dirty water from the lake and I'm just using gravity to run the water through the filter down into the clean collection bag so it doesn't take that long it actually flows pretty quick it's easier than squeezing the bag and uh, it gets me uh, two liters of water probably in about five minutes and I can do other camp chores while this is doing it. So it's a lot easier than squeezing, a lot easier than pumping. And uh, you don't have that, uh, that taste from the iodine tablets of old days. So this should be working pretty good. Now well, it's about a half hour before dusk. <clears throat> and we hear something on the other side of the lake. First we thought it was a couple of kids screwing around, but no, we don't think so. Now we're thinking maybe it's a coyote or something, but didn't know you'd get coyotes way up here, but maybe you do. There's no camping at that end of the lake, so unless it's a dog with somebody illegally camped, it's all quiet now. <laughs> 